I am the body snatcher. You know we love tummy tucks on this show. Welcome back to Unboxing. Welcome back, loyal fight fans, to another round of Unboxing. Eat that shit up. This is our first day back on the Monday schedule. So I hope you guys enjoy. We got a good little show and some good stuff to go over and talk about in the world of boxing today. First and foremost, if you have not subscribed already, but you're enjoying the picks, you're enjoying the content. You're not enjoying me picking just winners, but breaking down exactly why they would win uh, and, and looking at an incredible track record. Uh, then you are hitting the subscribe button and you are hitting the thumbs up button for me now. I appreciate it very much. Um, we're coming live and direct to wherever the hell you are in this world once a week. Could possibly go back up to twice a week, but we're going to stick with once a week. Um, and this is the new Monday show. So let's jump right in. Uh, big victory from David Benavidez, first off, uh, over the weekend. David Benavidez looked absolutely incredible. Now, he almost got a tough guy with a chin on him, with a bit of a chin on him, and who definitely hits hard uh, in David Lemieux. And he almost got that guy out of there in the first fucking round, which is just really incredible. Dude, it's really, 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 really impressive. Um, if he's able to, to anyone's, no one's ever done David Lemieux like that. So listen... If we're just being realists here, we're talking about what well, we, we kind of went over it already last week. I didn't see a way that, you know, David Lemieux could actually win the fight. And everybody knows that you don't need to come here to hear that. But this is kind of how you judge these things, right? So David Lemieux's not as good a boxer. Now he's tough as fuck. He's literally, he's tough as they come. You know, when you talk about heart and whatnot. And durability, you know, he has enough of a chin on him as well and can take some shots. Um, and he hits very, very hard. And he's a very aggressive kind of fighter. He wants to bring the fight to his opponent. Um, and that's kind of his whole thing. So, you know, that's to get a guy like that, uh, like that out of there almost in the first round, the... The referee actually, or I'm sorry, the um, ringside physician actually stepped in and said, I really was about to stop the fight at the end of that first round. But because the bell sounded, I'm like getting up there to stop the fight. And only because the bell sounded, I go, eh, he's going to get a break and go back to his corner. He's already standing, so I'm going to hold off. Um, and then Benavidez finished him off in that second round. But... You know, the, the the nice little short uppercuts from, from Benavidez were phenomenal. Uh, and, what, and what did we say last week? We said he doesn't just have to win, but he has to do it in dramatic fashion. He has to knock David Lemieux the hell out. Um, and he's got to rock that mic after. When he gets that chance, uh, you know, to, to, to pick up that microphone... Uh, and 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 call out Canelo uh, and try to call out Charlo and call out Caleb Plant. He needs to do it in the right way. It needs to be inspiring to the crowd. It needs to be on reels, uh, come back and forth. And boy, did he ever do all those things! The 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 uh, interview in the ring afterwards, the post fight, and they come up to him. Uh, He's now the WBC mandatory contender for Canelo. And he says, you already know I want that Canelo fight. And they go, well, and if Canelo's get, uh, getting the, the, the rematch with Bivol first, and, and that'll keep him busy, what do you want to do? And the next time, would it be a, a Caleb Plant? Would it be a Charlo? And he goes, man, I'm just looking for a fight. He goes, he literally and says, uh, those bitches know what, what's up. You know, they, they, and that, oh my God. You know, I mean, and... Here's the thing is, it's not just like talking to, oh, look, he called them bitches or he did. No, it's, it's really, he really used that time well. And doing that isn't, isn't the purpose of, oh, those bitches know what's up, you know. It, it's really the purpose of it being kind of true, dude. The, I mean, the, the Mexican monster is highly avoided, okay? Now, listen, he has bad blood with Caleb Plant. 
Caleb Plant does not like this guy at all. Caleb Plant's been getting in fights with him and his brother, uh, fights from the gym. There's a long backstory about between David Benavidez and Caleb Plant, who are both just such incredible contenders, you know. And, and Caleb Plant, listen, he stepped up and got that Canelo fight, and that's what he should have done. He did. He lost it. Um, gave a competitive enough effort in it. So, you know, that was his first loss. That's a perfect uh, match to make, man. And I don't see why it's not being made. I'm not sure what in the hell Caleb Plant is busy with these days. Um, I want to see him and Benavides. That's actually the fight I want to see. Because Canelo is going to get the Bivol rematch, whether we like it or not. Whether you agree with him, you know, whether you're a fan of his and you think that's maybe not such a great idea. Kind of along the lines of where I stand with it. But he's doing that nonetheless because God bless him. He's Canelo and he's just going to, he's not going to uh, take that loss and move away from it and go back down. Like might be smart for him to do. He's going to just do that again um, and try to win. So so God bless him. But he's, he's busy. So... What the hell is, and then, and then listen, Charlo, at least, you know, uh, Jamal Charlo, you know, they, they, they could make that fight, right? Or they could make the Caleb Plant fight. What, what are those guys doing that they're not fighting David Benavidez? I don't know. I don't know, but I want to see those fights. Um, those are great fights. And especially, listen, man, Canelo, you know, he's going to be boxing for a little while. But he's undisputed at that weight class. At some point, he will need to come down there and defend those belts. He's WBC mandatory. So what that really means is they could pay him some step-aside money so he can keep that belt too uh, and not have to defend it. But that's like for this one go-around. They do things per fight. So you're taking the Bivol rematch. You're going to have to – Benavidez getting paid because you're not setting up a match with him. Unless you say to the WBC – you know, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll come back down, and the first person I'll fight is your mandatory uh, for David Benavidez. You know, down at uh, at that weight class. But first, you know, before I go to 168, I'm, I'm gonna try to do my thing up here at 175 again against Bibble. And win or lose, I'll come back down and defend the belt. I don't know where it'll go, but there's nowhere to go except at some point Canelo, Charlo, or uh, um. Uh, Caleb Plant, you know, for, for David Benavides. Now, they're talking about Morrell. You know, is Morrell's a good fighter, young fighter. I don't really want to see that, man. I mean, he's he's going to, he's going to, um, he's going to, it's a good fight. That's a good substitute if you're not getting those other guys, but it kind of makes me mad that I already feel like the next fight is going to be Morrell versus Benavides. You know what I mean? So I, I just, because those other fights are more important. It's not that the Morrell fight's not a good fight. He's a great fighter, and that'll be a great contest. But it's just that we've waited so long already for David Benavides to get to this point. He's already got. He's been at this point, you know, for the last so many fights. He's undefeated. He's never lost those belts. He had those belts before. Cannot. He's only lost them because of a positive, you know, recreational drug test and uh, and and missing weight. Which fair enough. But you know, yeah. Those are the fights we need to see for that. And then, listen, Boatsy versus Craig Richards, you know, that, man, those, so for, for David Benavidez being on and being on the bigger network with the bigger platform, right, and having that fight, which was great, uh, you know, Boatsy, Craig Richards really flew under the radar. It really flew under the radar. Now, I did touch on it last week and said, that's a good test. That's close enough. To more so to a 50 fit like even the odds weren't staggering but they didn't they still didn't reflect how good of a competition that would be however and I knew that I knew it would be competitive but what we didn't know is if it would be competitive more of a of a you know in more of a boring to a casual kind of eyes uh, way where it's boxing where you gotta appreciate the movements in there and you gotta appreciate scoring for rounds and saying well being fair that's this way that's it and and that it would end up competitive in that way um versus an exciting competitive fight which is what we got those guys went to war over the weekend uh and it, it just i mean a boxing fan a casual and anything if you watch the two comp the two fights you know if you watch david benavidez uh versus david lemieux or you watch boazzi versus richards 
you can't come away telling me that the two round domination uh, that was almost one round was better. Uh, you can say better performance from the star of the show, but you you know that that uh, Boatsy Craig Richards fight was absolutely phenomenal. You guys got to go check that out for sure. A uh, little controversial as well because there's some people saying that. Maybe Craig Richards should have won that fight. Now, listen, I don't agree with that at all. I think that Boatsy did win that fight. But I'm here to tell you, I, I kind of see what you're saying. But you do need to have some criteria in general. And it doesn't matter what you favor. Uh, it, a little bit, but not really. You got to have just because real close fights can get dicey. This wasn't even that real close, I don't think, in my eyes. I like a guy that you know, can hurt the, his opponent. I like a guy whose shots are very clean and then uh, to, to, so he can, he can land less even. Now in the overall score of this thing, you know, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in, as far as um, shots landed, Boazzi outstruck, you know, Richards, but uh, that didn't seem like maybe what was going on. David Boazzi hurt Richards in almost, Every round, certainly those early ones. You know, round one opens up, and Craig Richards actually looks like he's in command of the fight. And he is using his jab, he is moving well, uh, and he is boxing, tying up when he's close. They're get, or, or sometimes Boaps he would, honestly, tie up when he got close. And I don't know why, but, uh, you know, the, the first round looked like, man, Craig Richards is winning this dude. There's only like 30 seconds left. Um, even maybe 15 seconds left of that first round. And Boatsy hurts Richards so visibly. So, you know, that you have to give him that round. You have to because he was never hurt. It, it's pitter-patter, you know, jabs and stuff that's landing on him. Jabs, straight in. A little bit of body work when, 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 when tying up also on the inside for Richards. But nonetheless, he was winning that first round until Boatsy hurt him at the end. Second round, a little bit more of the same. Boatsy hurt some a little bit earlier, but besides that, uh, it would have been a Richards round if you take that one little swing of momentum away. Um, but it is what it is. And then, you know, Boatsy has a huge third round, right? And then uh, the fourth and the fifth. The fifth is a little bit. Fourth is good for Boatsy. The fifth's a little tighter. I still gave that to him. So he's really, in my eyes, Boatsy was running away from this fight. He stole some of those. Uh, later ones as well, and I thought he won the fight. But Craig Richards, even in rounds that Craig Richards lost, most of these rounds are basically Craig Richards landing enough. You can see what he's trying every round. I, I do feel frustrated for the guy because I thought he lost the fight, but I do understand that you know everybody has a game plan, and if you come up real like if you're trying this round after round and you're handedly losing some rounds, but you have some success, you know, in some rounds. It's, it's simply not good enough. But what is hard to see is a guy like Craig Richards that had success in every single round at times. You know, he he's the one that made this a war and made it where he told Boatsy basically, "I'm not going to let you steamroll me." Um, and and most of these rounds were very competitive. So, uh, they, it, but. You just got to look at the swings of momentum. Uh, you know, Boatsy was just hurting Richards left and right, especially at the first half of the fight. Um, so, yeah, he just, you know, he deserves the win. It's a great win for him. Now, Craig Richards is a guy that's been in there with Dimitri Bivol, stuff like that. So he's he's really, you know, he, he's a great fighter. And that's why I said this would be a great test. We just didn't know how the fight would turn out. And I'm actually really surprised that, and and. and and, and, and shocked a little bit of how good the fight was. It was very good. This is a very good fight. Very fun fight to watch. Um, and then, listen, whose lights are going out? Gervonta Tank Davis versus Roland Romero. Roly Romero. Um, cow, man. So, basically, just good to see Mini Mike back in the ring, baby. Uh, you know, Tank Davis just a star a class star and what gets lost in translation a little as I'm calling him mini Mike as well because uh, he is and he hits very hard 
But like my, I actually think a lot like Mike Tyson, right? This might be a controversial take. They, it's not that they don't hit hard. They, him and Gervonta Davis, they're kind of one and the same to me because they both hit very hard. You have some boxers that clearly are never known for power by any standards, anyone's standards. You have a lot of boxers that are not known for being heavy handed, okay? So that's a lot of guys. And when you are that way, that's perfectly fine too, but you rely on your boxing ability, your timing, your counters, whatnot. Then you have guys that hit like a truck, okay? Like Ernie Shavers, for instance. There is no debate. It's just like you, he could, they could kill someone with their hand if they hit you. So you could beat the guy up uh, for a while. And if he hits, you could land, you know, 55 shots on him of not even little tap jabs, but like jabs, just maybe, you know, not crushing uppercuts or overhands perfectly executed. You know, you could tag somebody though and tag them pretty hard, you know, 50, 60, 70 times. And if they touch you that one time, you're dead. Right, so there has been people like that, like like Ernie Shavers, you know. Uh, Mike Tyson gets grouped in with some of the hardest hitters. I am one of the biggest Mike Tyson fans. He definitely, there is no debate, you can't say the guy doesn't have power, right? And this is what I'm saying in translates the same for both as Mike Tyson is. What I'm saying here is also, in my opinion, my humble opinion, the same for Javante Davis. Um, they both hit hard. And you would qualify, like put them in a category of people who can crack, right? But the death touch, like Deontay Wilder, for instance, no. I don't think either of those guys, obviously comparable to the weight as well, because we're talking heavyweight and then also, you know, 135 pounder, 140 pounder. So, uh, but they both, Tyson and Gervonta Davis can crack, but not have a death touch I don't think so what gets lost in translation anyways is the the boxing ability of both guys it takes a long time for people to usually realize when looking back at Tyson fights that well, you know he would KO people in the first round a lot and then even if it got a couple rounds in later like he's he's getting people out of there right and good fighters as well so they're, they're all very powerful he is very powerful He's not an Ernie Shavers. He's not a Deontay Wilder powerful, though. He gets people out of there because he has enough, you know, uh, good crack in, in, in his hands. But he doesn't have the same power as those other level of power hitters, right? Uh, of physical, just born with strength in your hands. He has enough of that, and he marries that with a great boxing ability. He is in Mike Tyson. He is in Gervonta Davis. Same kind of thing for both of them, I think. Um, and big fans of both. And so I think that they marry that with boxing ability and precise timing and throwing and landing, countering people in between them throwing shots, hitting people with the perfect timing when it's unexpected. Because you don't need a lot of power. And we see guys that are not Mike Tyson or... They, they're no, notorious, as a matter of fact, all the time we see it, for not having a lot of power, okay? Um, but the time, Vasily Lomachenko, for instance, no, he's not a guy that's like, oh man, he's got power. He's just not. He has fantastic time. I mean, don't get me started on Vasily Lomachenko. Even his distance managing, his footwork, he's got everything, but he's got that fantastic timing of countering. His opponent in precise his his precise location that his shots land are never by mistake. He doesn't throw and say I'm gonna hit you in the head or face somewhere. He knows where the shot's going. He knows what he he predicts where you'll be once his shot lands, um, and he times it in such a way as to when you're throwing punches while you're throwing a punch and get clipped and it's just it's over for you. So. I very much think that is where Gervonta Davis is at. Rolly Romero is another guy that can hit very hard. So, I mean, mark my words. This, when you watch this fight, uh, you're going to see not only like a KO. It's not going to be a TKO. 
It's going to be a KO, right? You're going to see a bad knock, and it's going to be a bad one. A really, really bad knockout. And there's no way in the world that it's not going to be Roley Romero just face down on the, on the canvas. It's just not. Because you have two guys that can hit hard. Uh, and that's the thing. Is people hate Roley. He's a troll. So you hate him. Oh, he don't hit that. He's never fought him. Listen, I'm being fair to everybody here. Uh, he can't win this fight, Roley Romero. He can't win it. But the reason isn't because he doesn't have power. He has plenty of power. It's debatable. We could debate who he who even would hit harder. You can see the guy has a lot of power. And he probably has it in both hands, not just his right hand, you know. Um, but he doesn't have nearly enough boxing ability. It's not always oh, not a good counter. It's not always oh, defense is not on point. It's not... Oh, his footwork's all over the place, and he's, he'll trip up on his own movement and stuff at times. It's not when he's letting his offense go and putting combinations together. It looks sloppy, and he's just a bit of a dog who can hit hard. It's all those things. It's all those things at once. And then you're dealing with a guy in Javante Davis that don't be fooled of what you've heard. He doesn't just hit hard. He's, he's, he's just as good as, if not more so should be recognized for his boxing ability. Um, and you're going to see that. <laughs> you're fucking, you're going to see that. And whose lights are going out? It's going to be Rolly Romero. I don't see this fight making it to the fifth round. I don't. Uh, I would be amazed if it does. And I would bet my fucking life savings and everything I've earned in life um, that, you know, Rolly Romero gets KO'd at this point. But if you look for the over-under, it's probably like three rounds, for fuck's sake. Because I'm going to be a little safer and tell you, this fight doesn't see the fifth. Um, and yeah, we're going to sit back and enjoy. Uh, it is great. It is exciting. Let me tell you, as a boxing fan who knows that Rolly Romero can't win this fight, that fucking guy has been just priceless in selling this thing. Um, and I'm a fan nonetheless. This is going to end bad for you, my friend. This is not going to be pretty, but I'm going to watch you fight afterwards if you're capable of it. Because, um, you know, I, when you get into boxing, you like all this shit or the shit talk, right? And the trash talk, the back and forth. And then you can still appreciate that, but it becomes after years and years and more that you're watching, learning about, you know, boxing it becomes more about like is the fight competitive and just all that other shit can miss me you know you can miss me with that stuff it's is it competitive um and this is not this is like the first time in a long time i i am actually just excited to see them both get in there because Rolly Romero's been talking so much shit and i and and he can crack and here's the other thing is he's not gonna be afraid i promise you he won't try to move around <laughs> move around a box I fucking promise you he won't, you know. He might move around a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, this is going to be bad. This is a sure thing. This is a sure thing. Very, very bad KO. Because um, he, he'll trip up over his own feet, man, when he's, fucking, when he's throwing. He, not, not even just moving around and doing, like, evasive, you know, movements and getting off the rope. He'll, like, trip over his own fucking feet. When, the guy doesn't jab. I don't know that we're going to see a fucking jab from Roller Romero. I mean, he can, but he, he just doesn't. He doesn't. He likes those looping shots, God bless him. It's pretty much set up. And you know what? It, it, is, it is also, to be fair here, as a huge Tank Davis fan, okay, as a guy that believes that Tank Davis is the only one who can truly be like ultra competitive in a fight that that with Vasily Lomachenko, I have always thought before the Tiafimo fight with with Loma, and I still do now. I have always thought throw out Devin Haney, throw out Ryan Garcia. And I don't want to disrespect George Cambosis because I fucking like that guy. And he is a dog of a human being. But as far as just real talk and who's the best 135er, is it the best weight class in boxing possibly? You got two guys. It's Tank Davis and it's Vasily Lomachenko. So I'm a huge Tank Davis fan. But, you know, before we wrap this thing, I do want to be fair on all angles here. 
um, just to say, you know, I, I think that being fair, this is, I have to tell you guys, this is Showtime uh, doing its Showtime thing. This is Al Heyman and Floyd Mayweather doing their thing where they feed somebody to roll your marrow. And then you reach a level where you can't have guys you never heard of. So now it is at a point where we get a guy that, you know, you should have heard of in Rolly Romero, who can promote the hell out of himself with the very best, uh, who knows how to get under people's skin, things like that, uh, and, 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 and to help. He's good for the promotion of this fight. He's good for making money in this fight. And then not only is he uh, easy enough win for Tank Davis to get, I, I presume, but also kind of like we talked about with the David Lemieux facing Benavidez thing, it's also like a complete setup in ways where you're taking not just a guy, it's like, oh, I have a better boxer, so my guy will win, you, you know, and, and put him against somebody. It, it has to be a little more than that, so now you got a guy that can help promote the fight, that maybe you heard his name too, that can excite more people, some more tickets, and seems to be a more step up but really is like very in depth as like a guy that will go in there and scrap like David Lemieux did, like we talked about, like where it's set up a uh, good counter, you know, puncher who hits hard to can just turn this guy's lights out. But before he does, even if it only lasts, you know, a round or two, it looks very exciting and wild. Uh, thanks to Rolly Romero. You know what I mean? And then it's a, it's a casual fancy as, well, look at that guy was crazy, and I heard he hits on. Look at how he was swinging at him, though. So it's even more impressive that, you know, Tank Davis knocked him out. Like, this ain't the one. This ain't the one to get super impressed about. But you're going to see, like, a bad knockout, dude, because it's set up in that way. Uh, a guy that throws his punches really wide. Here's the, here's the whole close of the show, fellas is, uh, and ladies, is that, you know, Short punches will always land before long punches. And that's just, that's the end of it. Uh, and, and so, so, so take it easy, enjoy the fights. And I just really pray uh, that Rolly Romero makes it out okay from this and can keep boxing that. Because I'm going to be a fan of you, buddy. I'm going to be a fan of you. I already kind of am. But yeah, this will end real bad, huh? Uh, stay loyal, fight fans.